Welcome to Virtual College Exploration for All Illinois Students. We're hosted by the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling and Strive Scan. So we want to go over a few housekeeping items before I turn it over to Orlando this evening. Um, how do I ask questions? You're going to use your Q&A button to type your questions. Orlando will be able to see them at all time. Your camera and microphone are off. So you're muted, your video's off. He can't see or hear you. And if you want, you can sign up for more sessions because we'll have more just like this college presentation offered at www.iacac.org. And this recording will be available afterward at www.iacac.org. Okay, Orlando, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. Awesome. All right, well, good afternoon. Um, my name is Orlando Ramirez. I'm an assistant director of admission at DePaul University. And um, I have some unfortunate news. For some reason, I cannot share my, let me try one more time. No, okay. So um, my PowerPoint slides are not available, which means that I am trying real hard to try to make this as interactive, what just happened? All right, let's stop sharing there. Okay, I uh, hope you guys can still hear me. Well, so, okay, um, DePaul University uh, is in Greencastle, Indiana, uh, which is three and a half hours south of Chicago. Um, as um, was said earlier, you're able to send questions via the Q&A. And, um, and honestly, that would be a really great way to know that um, you're engaged and that you're still here. Um, but basically I will try to do the presentation and I will send out the PowerPoint slides immediately after I get your names and your email addresses. So, so DePauw is a liberal arts school with a school of music. Um, we have about 2000 students at the university. The university has all of its students living on campus all four years. So um, it's a great community for students looking to not only um, take classes and things like that, but actually learn from each other. Uh, I think a big part of the educational experience at DePaul in particular is the fact that they can actually live together, learn together, um, and actually engage each other. So one thing that's really particular about DePaul students is that they are very social. Um, they are the types of people that really do enjoy just having a conversation. They can strike up a conversation with anybody. Uh, and even the students that come in that are a little uh, more on the conservative side, shy side, you can see a transformation in them over the four years and you'll see them, uh, or rather I will say this, if you put DePaul graduates with other people in a large room, I can pick out exactly who are the DePaul graduates just because of that the way that they actually engage the people in the in the room how they command the room things like that so that's the type of community you would be joining if you came to DePaul now I said that there's about 2,000 students at the university and so the average class size is going to be around 15 to 17 students and um, the average uh, sorry the student to faculty ratio is eight to one so what does that mean? Obviously you've heard the terms, you know, you get the individualized attention um, or that you get that kind of personal experience and that's all very true. But what I think it means is that it actually means that every opportunity we have on campus is for you. So if you wanna do research, if you wanna study abroad, if you want a role in the musical or the opera, or if you want to lead, you know, one or two different student organizations, you can do that, right? We don't have any graduate students, which means, especially in terms of research, that you don't have to fight for um, an ability to actually do research, right? And that also means that you have direct access to your professors. So when you sit in a biology class or a chemistry class, you're not being taught by a TA, you're not being taught by a PhD student, you're actually being taught by the professor. And that means a lot because a few reasons why. One, you're getting full access to that professor. Um, and then you can actually meet with them during office hours um, and, and pick their brain even more. But on top of that, um, you actually get hands-on experience with them. Let's say you were to do a research uh, project with them. Um, you would actually potentially be published 
with your professor in the published article, which is a really great experience for somebody who is at the undergraduate level, you know, and that actually is very marketable. When you're looking for PhD programs in your senior year, you can actually say, yes, I got published in these articles um, and I went to these conferences, things like that. And that's because you're in an environment where you are literally right there in front of the professor. So, um, and on, on, on the more social side, uh, students and professors at DePaul definitely develop great relationships where they, um, they become mentor figures. Uh, and there are many times where DePaul grads are talking about how they continue to stay in touch with some of their professors. And some of the professors are actually writing recommendation letters for them, they're vouching for them, they're references for them when it comes to job opportunities. So, so it really is something that's worthwhile and something that you should look into when you're considering the school. So, okay, so we've got the class sizes all done. Um, about one third of our student population are student athletes, which means that, and we are a division three school, uh, it means that we have a good portion of the school that are not only being educated at DePaul, but they're participating and they are owning their experience by being a student athlete. And you can do it, you can do it well. Um, you will have time to study and you will have time to practice. This goes the same thing, same way with the students in the School of Music. So, um, when you graduate from DePaul, you will graduate with a Bachelor of Arts degree in one of 49 different majors. Um, I can tell you that our top 10 majors are economics, computer science, communications, psychology, English writing, and then you have kinesiology, political science. Um, I would also say, oh, global health, which is a newer major that I could definitely talk about. Um, and then we have a couple of others. English literature is actually up there as well. Um, so now the cool thing about DePaul is that you do not need to know what your major is going to be before you even apply to the school. I know that at some schools you have to apply to a certain department or to a college within the university. You don't do that at DePaul. You just apply to DePaul, you come in undecided, and you have until the end of your sophomore year to declare your major. And the best part of that is that you have so much flexibility. You could have one major, you could have two majors, you could have a major and a minor, a major and three minors. That's a lot of work, by the way. Um, and uh, you can also create your own major as well. So again, the flexibility is, is really great because we all know, you know, you're in high school and in the time that you've been alive, honestly, you've probably changed your mind about what you wanna do when you grow up, right? Um, and it doesn't stop when you get to college. There will be one class that you take that's in a completely different department. And, uh, and by the end of the class or the semester, you're like, wow, that blew my mind. I want to take another class in that department or with that professor. And so you start going down that path and you never know that that could actually lead you in a completely different direction. And so um, we love the ability to let students explore, take courses that sound interesting to them. It doesn't mean that you can't start taking courses within a certain department that you were interested in originally. So let's say you came in and you're like, Orlando, I want to study business. I'm like, okay. Um, so you can start taking courses in the economics department. You can even start taking courses in the communications department, in psychology, in all sorts of departments that actually might help supplement what you're already learning in the economics department. So, so that said, keep that in mind. Now, if you are looking at majoring in music, you have a choice of four different degrees, performance, music education, the Bachelor of Musical Arts degree, which allows you to double major um, and do it within four years. But then we also have the five-year double degree where you can get a degree from the College of Liberal Arts, which is where all of the other majors are, uh, and then also a degree from the School of Music. Uh, it just takes five years. So now if you don't want to major in music, but you still love music, you're singing in the shower, or you play piano, or you play guitar, or things like that, you can audition for any of our major ensembles and still participate without being a major. It's the same thing with the musical that we, do, we have every fall. It's the same thing with the, with the opera that we have in the spring semester. So take advantage of that opportunity if you are musically talented. I actually was a music major at DePaul, so it would break my heart if you don't take advantage of the School of Music. So 
That said, uh, let's talk about the honors programs. So we have four honors programs that work hand in hand with the majors. Um, and the reason why I say it that way is because you don't have to be a particular major to be in any of these honors programs. There's four of them. So I'll start off with the honor scholars. The honor scholars is just taking liberal arts to that next degree. So the seminar courses that you take in that program really push your critical thinking skills. And it's for students who are really interested in seeing how different fields of study connect, right? You could be, let's say, a political science major and you're looking at the diamond industry. And a course that you take about it, uh, about that diamond industry might actually talk about the economic, economic factors, might talk about the political factors that affect the industry and also affect the people involved. Um, you could also take a, a lens of um, sociology and study the demographics that are impacted um, by decisions that are made at the political level, at the economic level, um, and that would be a typical honor scholars class. You do have to write a thesis paper in your senior year. Um, I smile because it is a lot of work. Um, it's, uh, it can be 100 pages long, and that paper, you have to defend it in front of a panel of faculty members. So if you like to challenge yourself, if you like to push yourself, and you feel like, yeah, I can do this, the Honor Scholars Program is a really great program for you. Now, the other three programs, um, they kind of go down a specific route um, for students. So one of them is down the path of media. So any student interested in broadcasting, journalism, um, advertising and marketing, social media, that would all fall under the Media Fellows Program. The second one is the Management Fellows Program for students interested in business, uh, so uh, finance, accounting, investment banking, consulting, um, entrepreneurialism. So that program helps students uh, in those areas. And then the final one is the Environmental Fellows Program, which is for students obviously interested in the environment, but it doesn't have to be students who are interested in environmental research. It can include those students, but it could be also a student that is looking um, at becoming a lawyer and who really loves the environment and a potential career, you know, down, down the road would be that you're lobbying for environmental policy at the local state level or even at the federal level. So, um, so keep that in mind. All four honors pro, well, wow, that's, that's clearly five. Um, all four honors programs have their own application. Um, and, oh, and you apply in your senior year. However, if you do not apply in your senior year or you don't get in, you still have a shot to get into the programs in the first semester of your freshman year uh, as a lateral entry. So, um, so let me know, you know, obviously I'll be reaching out to you after the presentation to not only share the slides that you didn't get to see, but also um, if you have any questions about any of the honors programs because they really do add a lot of value uh, in your experience at DePaul. So, all right. So in terms of experiential learning, I didn't mention this early or in the, in the presentation, but I should have started this way. DePaul is a traditional liberal arts school um, where you are taking courses in a lot of different areas to really develop those critical thinking skills that I've, I've already mentioned. Um, but we're also not traditional in the sense that we have such a huge emphasis on experiential learning and career preparation. So we currently have about 97% of our students already placed, meaning that they have a job or that they are in a grad program by the time that they graduate. And we can actually go on to say that we're gonna have 100% of our students in that same field. Um, and this is the reason why. So DePaul initiated the gold commitment a couple of years ago. Uh, and the gold commitment states that if six months after you graduate, you're still looking for a job or you haven't gotten into grad programs, we will give you two options, two options. I'm really struggling with the numbers here. So um, the first option is that you'll be able to come back to campus for another semester tuition free. And in that semester, you'll take additional courses that really can help some technical skills help you pick up some technical skills that you still need. Let's say you're looking to go into business school and you haven't taken any statistics courses while you were at DePaul. That's okay. You can do that in that one semester, you know? Um, but the second option is that you can actually be employed by an alum who has partnered up with DePaul and said, 
yes, I'll take on a DePaul grad um, because we take care of each other. And so, so those are the two options through the gold commitment. And a lot of it is based on experiential learning. Um, experiential learning can take shape in a lot of different ways. It could mean internships, right? That's usually what everybody thinks of first, but it could also be your involvement in student organizations or your leadership roles or being an athlete, right? Or going abroad for a semester. Um, all of these things um, come together as experiential learning opportunities and there's tons at DePaul. And I'm not saying that because I'm an admission counselor, but I also graduated from DePaul and I experienced this myself. Um, so take it, I'll tell you this, a DePaul student can have one or two majors. They might be in one of the honors programs. They might be in Greek life, a fraternity or sorority. They might be a student athlete or in the school of music. And then they might be involved in one or two different student organizations. And I'm not exaggerating that. So, um, so just know that that could be what you do. We've had students do research um, within our sciences here and they've gone to conferences and we've actually paid for them to go to those conferences. We've paid for their travel, we've paid for their hotel and we've paid for their conference fees. Um, and usually it's, it's awesome to hear these stories because you have DePaul students who are undergraduates um, at these conferences where there are graduate students and PhD students presenting as well. Uh, and we're proud that we have our students there. So um, I did mention study abroad. I wanna talk about study abroad because it is a big part of the campus culture. So DePaul is actually ranked fourth in the nation. Let's try this one more time. Fourth in the nation um, for the amount of students participating in study abroad um, and also for making it affordable for them. So you can actually apply for many scholarships that we have at DePaul to help you fund uh, your way to another nation. So uh, it's usually a year long process. I normally get asked, okay, what study abroad programs do you have? I can't tell you because there are so many. Um, we literally have students going all over Europe. In um, South America, usually we have students going to Argentina, Chile, um, Venezuela, and then in Africa, South Africa has become very popular with our students. Um, so has Egypt, um, so has Kenya. And then in Asia, we have students going to India, um, Nepal, we have students going to China, Japan, and then, then we have Australia, New Zealand as well. So it, it, it's a really great opportunity that you should take advantage of. I'll tell you many times, the, one of the only regrets DePaul students have when they graduate is that they didn't take a semester abroad. Um, so don't let that be you, all right? Now, if you haven't visited campus yet, you'll see that Greencastle is located in, uh, in the middle of Indiana. Actually, we're kind of west of Indianapolis. Um, and so when you're driving here or even flying, you'll definitely see a lot of cornfields. Um, you'll see some soybean fields and you'll wonder, okay, where am I going? Uh, where is this DePaul? Uh, am I going to be bored? Am I gonna pull my hair out? Um, am I gonna have anything to do? And, and the answer is, no, you're not going to be bored, but yes, you'll have plenty to do. And the reason being is that we have so many things going on, whether it is an event that the university is putting on. So that could be guest speakers, it could be guest artists um, or lectures, things like that, or events that students are putting on, whether it's a student organization or whether it's a philanthropy that one of our Greek um, institutions are putting on there's always something going on. And on the weekends, 95% of our students are staying on campus. So you know you're gonna see your friends over the weekend. You know you're gonna have a good time. You know you're gonna hang out, but you're also gonna to go to different events. Um, I mentioned earlier that we have about a third of our student population involved in athletics. So we are a D3 school. We have 23 varsity teams. Um, we have, among the 23 varsity teams, we have, I think four or five teams that are usually in the NCAA tournaments every year. Um, definitely the women's basketball team. They've actually won two division championships. And then we have our both, both of our swim teams are always sending students to nationals. Um, we have the softball team is also really great. Volleyball, the baseball team, and then of course the football team. And I want to end with the football team because they actually host 
one of our biggest traditions at DePa, um, and you need to Google this because it's actually a really big deal. So um, the Monon Bell game is the last football game of the season every year. And we play one team every year, um, Wabash College, which is an all-male school that is 40 minutes north of us. This rivalry is so strong. So um, if you Google, uh, you'll definitely find it uh, th that it has its own Wikipedia page. But just to give you an example of what that rivalry can look like, um, there are so, so many stories of each school trying to steal this big railroad bell that's like 300 pounds um, that we fight for every year. And so DePaul had the bell maybe three or four years ago, and a few Wabash students decided that they wanted to come to campus and steal the bell. Good for them. They did a great job. They hid in our basketball arena for like six hours. They had painter suits. They had masks. They had a dolly for the bell because it's so heavy. They had a wrench because they needed to unbolt it from the podium. Well, what they didn't realize was that the podium was weight censored and triggered the alarm once they had it off. By the time they got out of the building, the cops were waiting for them. So, um, so you can actually see this uh, in the news. And what's great about that is that they did go to court, but they were represented by lawyers who were DePaul grads and Wabash grads. Um, and so it was a really great story. Obviously it's tradition, um, and, uh, but it's such a great thing. When you graduate from DePaul, you can actually go to these broadcast parties throughout the nation. So any major city is gonna have a DePaul alumni there. And so you can go to these bars and actually watch uh, the game with other DePaul alumni and Wabash alumni that live in the area. And in fact, you can watch it even now. Well, not this year because of COVID, but um, in a typical year, you could watch it because it's picked up by Fox Sports. Um, it's one of very few D3 uh, events that actually get nationally televised. So I know I went on and on about the Monon Bell game, but when you're a DePaul student, it means a lot to you. So um, I do want to talk about Greek life at DePaul because we have had a really long and rich tradition with fraternity and sorority life. So uh, first, we founded the first sorority in the entire country at DePaul. Uh, we actually founded two sororities at DePaul. Um, and then we also have two of the longest running fraternities in the entire nation, meaning that they've never been shut down since they, they were founded at DePaul. So, so that's a really long history. We have about 67% of our student population involved in Greek life, which seems, well, it, it is a lot, and which seems intimidating. Um, but I'll tell you this, um, and I should have mentioned this earlier, but I'm originally from New York City. I did, had no intention to join Greek life when I was at DePaul. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, by the end of my, my first semester, I realized that I had a lot of friends who were already in a certain fraternity. And so when it came down to Rush, um, you know, I visited all diff different houses. They put on all these skits and, and, and really funny um, speeches and things like that. Um, and I realized that I actually wanted to be a part of Greek life. And in, in particular, the fraternity where a lot of my friends were. Um, and it, to this day, there isn't one day that I don't talk to a fraternity brother uh, because we're constantly texting, calling each other, Zooming each other. So um, and the opportunities that you can find through Greek life are really great. Um, networking in particular, you have a lot of successful alumni that come out of DePaul and a lot of them themselves happen to be in Greek life as well. So you have instant access uh, to these alumni and when you are looking for internships or job opportunities, they're there for you. Um, and they, they definitely love to help their own. Another one is leadership. Um, when you are in a fraternity or a sorority uh, and you run for a cabinet position and you get that position, there's a lot of responsibility. You are taking care of maybe 40 or 50 other people who live in the same house together. You're having to manage personalities, manage um, expectations, um, do a lot, right? I always say that if you can manage a fraternity house, you could definitely be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. No doubt, just because there's so much you have to do. So, um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about that because I know fraternity and sorority life can be polarizing, um, but I definitely think that at the PA, the, the culture here is a little bit different. Uh, and it also takes away a lot of the pressure. You don't have to rush when you come uh, when you move into the university, we don't do rush until the spring semester of your first year, 
but then you don't move into the house until sophomore year anyway. So you have a lot of time to just be yourself, be a college student, you know, learn the ropes, everything before you actually make that commitment. So now in terms of other student organizations, we have a lot of groups um, tied to affinity. Um, so we have student uh, organizations like the Association of African American Students. We have Council for Latino Concerns. We have the Muslim Student Association. We have a ton of uh, organizations that are uh, related to nations in Asia. Um, we have, wow, just a lot. Um, and those are just the, those affinity groups. We also have clubs that are tied to athletics or activities. So we have an outdoors club. We have um, a Ultimate Frisbee Club. We have a um, rock climbing club. These are all the ones that I know off the top of my head. I'm sure that we have more. And then we have groups that are tied to more academic pursuits. So like the ethics bowl, a debate team, we have a speech club. Um, and then, and you know, we have Democrats of DePaul, we have Republicans of DePaul, uh, or campus Republicans. And then we have um, actually social, Democratic Socialists of DePaul as well. So we have enough variety that if you needed to find a group that really related to your interests, you can definitely find it. Uh, another thing I wanna talk about are the oven lecture series at DePaul. The oven lectures are huge. So we bring in world leaders from everywhere and every walk of life too. It doesn't have to necessarily be politics. We also, um, we've had members of the arts and entertainment industries come to DePaul through this lecture series. So I'll tell you the oven lectures are, they're usually about two or three every year and the students get this really great chance to meet people like Malala Yousafzai, like Bill Clinton, like the former prime ministers of, uh, the great, of great Britain, um, we've had Spike Lee, we've had Peyton Manning, we've had Leslie Odom Jr. Um, we've had people in the sciences, um, Jane Goodall, a famous biologist. And so these students get an opportunity not only to hear from them, but potentially interact with them because they'll have small uh, meeting sessions with a smaller group of DePaul students before they actually do the big lecture. So it's a really great opportunity. I love the fact that I can bring this up in conversation because let's be honest, you know, people, they, they hear Greencastle, Indiana, and they know that it's 45 minutes from the, the first big city. And they don't realize that we actually bring the world to DePaul through this lecture series, through other lecture series uh, with the writing department, the, the contemporary media center, all of that. So uh, it's something that we're really proud of. So um, we have about 30 minutes, I think. Yes. So we, uh, I mean, I could definitely go into um, the application process uh, because I don't know if you all are juniors or seniors or even sophomores, but I'll go through the application process. DePauw is a test optional school, uh, meaning that we don't require your test scores in order to be admitted to the university. In fact, 26% of the students who enrolled in this year's current class applied test, test optional. And we do expect that number to go up this year, especially because so many students uh, have been prevented from taking those exams. So now, if, we do, if you do submit your test scores, we also super score, meaning that we'll take the highest scores from each of the exams you took and then average out a new composite. So it maximizes what your composite could be. Um, now, uh, we are on the common application, which we definitely recommend for everybody, even though we have our own application. And this is the reason why. If you're already working on the common app for a different school, why make it harder for yourself? So we don't have an application fee and we don't have a supplemental essay. So whatever you write for the common application will be enough for our application. Um, the one caveat is that we do have those four separate applications for the honors programs that I mentioned earlier. So, um, so just keep that in mind and I'll come back to that in a second. Um, the biggest thing when we're reviewing an application, the biggest thing that, that holds weight will be your transcript. Obviously we wanna see how you're doing in your, in your classes. Um, and that was a big reason why we decided to go test optional. We saw the biggest correlation between the grades in high school and the grades that you got at the PAW. And so 
we realize that that's a really big indicator of how you will do with us. Um, we want to see that you challenged yourself. So if your school is offering AP courses and IB courses and, and you are up to the challenge, by all means, challenge yourself and do that. Otherwise, um, we want to see good grades in, in whatever level of courses you're taking. So um, we do not, okay, so we do have the essay on the ap application. We have recommendation letters that come in. Um, if you want, you can actually do an interview with an admission counselor at DePaul, whether it's me or another one, or actually one of our admission interns as well. And that gets added to your application. It's not required, but if you want to, it really does help put a, a picture to your application. And, and so when I'm reading your application, I would be like, oh yeah, I remember meeting this student. Um, and it changes um, the dynamic on the application. So um, got the interviews, all of that. Um, we have four deadlines. Um, the deadlines are as such. Early decision one, um, which is a binding application, is due November 15th. Early action, on the other hand, is non-binding, and that is due December 1st. Uh, we do have a, a second early decision in January, uh, and then we have regular decision in February. I'm gonna stop here and talk about the dynamics of these deadlines. I know that a lot of students will um, apply regular decision because they've probably applied early decision to another school or early action to another school. And, and I wanna recommend that you actually at least look into applying early action at the PAW. And this is the reason why. When you apply earlier, um, it's showing that you're, you are interested in the school, so that does help your application. Um, it also allows you the opportunity to hear about the additional scholarship programs that we have at DePaul, as well as give you time to apply to the honors programs because the deadline for the honors programs is later in the process. So, um, so early action is definitely something I recommend. If you visit campus um, and you fall in love with the campus, because let me tell you, DePaul's campus is gorgeous. Uh, we're actually ranked top 50 most beautiful campuses in the nation uh, by Condé Nast. And so, so you should definitely visit campus. We are accepting visitors. Um, we are limiting the amount of vis visitors that we're having every day. So when you go to sign up or register for a visit, um, you know, the date that you might are looking for might not be available, but keep searching or reach out to me and we'll try to see what we can do. But, um, but the visits themselves are great because obviously you get to see the campus. We do have students on campus this semester, albeit at 50% capacity, um, but you'll get to see this school kind of in its vibe. Um, but then uh, the tour, I will say, is actually a little limited in the buildings that you can actually attend. So, or enter, sorry. Um, you can also talk to a professor while you're on campus uh, via Zoom. You could talk to a coach if you're looking to do athletics as, um, as a student. Um, but yeah, so going back to the application, um, we will be sending out notification letters on a weekly basis. So um, now it doesn't mean that if you apply, let's say on Monday, the first Monday of October, that you're going to get it by the end of that week. That's a potential, but it you know, it depends on how many applications we have in at the pool at the same time. So it might take two weeks, um, but hopefully no longer than that. Um, let's see, I guess the final, and by the way, I've gone through this presentation exactly the way you should see the PowerPoint slides. So when you do receive them, hopefully it'll jog your memory of the way I did it. Um, the last slide of the presentation is just promoting our social media accounts. I definitely want to recommend that you at least follow our um, Snapchat or Instagram because on Monday mornings, you'll actually see in the stories all of the events that are happening during the week. And so, or you might see some student takeovers and it'll really give you a good idea of what's going on on campus. You know, you can fact check me, right? Orlando said in his presentation that there's always something going on. I'm going to check it out. And there you go. You can see it. Um, but like today, for example, the, the stories, um, there's been a takeover by one student who is the, she's the VP of um, campus activities in student government. Um, she's actually from New York and she's a Posse member, uh, a Posse 
Yeah, a Posse member, which is a leadership program that we have. Um, I'm not sure who is out in this presentation, but if you're from Chicago, we do have um, partnerships with Posse in Chicago as well as New York. Um, so that's pretty much the end of the presentation. Uh, we do have about 25 minutes. Oh, no, sorry, less than that. Um, let's see if I can make the. I was a music major. We count to four. And obviously, I wasn't doing that well in the first place. But <laughs> I think we have 10 minutes, uh, which is perfect time for any questions. So I have the question box open. Um, please let me know if there's something you want me to clarify or if there's something that you need more details about, um, whether it's about the academic programs or athletics or the school of music, uh, the application process, anything like that. I'll sit here in an awkward silence for maybe five seconds and see if you have any questions. Okay. Well, I don't see anything popping up right now, uh, and that's perfectly fine. I will say that um, you're always welcome to reach out to me. Um, I don't know exactly how you receive my contact information, but here it is. Um, it's very easy. Orlando Ramirez, you see my, my name in the, uh, the box there. Uh, so there's no space, no dots, no anything. Just Orlando Ramirez at depaw.edu. And so you're welcome to reach out to me. And, uh, and then we can have a conversation about your particular needs for a college, um, things like that. So, uh, and I would say, if I don't receive any questions, that, that's the end of the presentation. I really appreciate you being patient with me without a pre, uh, an actual PowerPoint slide. Uh, I know that I will get that to you ASAP, um, but I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Orlando. You did a wonderful job tonight. <laughs> Thank you guys all for joining us today. And there will be a quick survey after you close this window. Just four questions, if you don't mind answering it for us, please. And you can sign up for more sessions again at www.iacac.org. And this recording will be available in about a week at the most at www.iacac.org. Thank you again. And you guys have a great day. Bye, everyone.